So them a ask me how me get it from. And two them no know it's from creation. And two them no know it's from creation. Bam bam. Tawa ta bam bam. Cha bam bam dilang. Cha bam bam bam. Bam bam dilang. Cha bam bam bam. Tawa ta bam bam. Cha let me say what bam bam. Bam bam to just speaking of the single, it's been such an impactful song over, I can't even believe it's been 35 years already. 35 years, 1982. Do you actually remember when you had the first idea for the record? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, what, yeah. what was that, that initial spark? Well, um, it, it's just an, it, just an ordinary day. I was at the studio with Yellow Man because I was working with Yellow Man at the time. And I was at uh, R.E.J. studio and Yellow Man did a bam bam. And I had to come. I had to complete the one two album because you know Bam Bam is a part of the album. It's a right. compilation of the one two album. So I had nine tracks laid already. I only had one left. I couldn't find a song to finish the album. And being at the studio with Yellow Man, and he did a Bam Bam. I said, well, I called Mr. Riley and said that's techniques and say I, I have an idea to finish the album. And him say, how oh, will you get idea from? You never have any yesterday or the day before. Me say, well, I, I'm gonna do a Bam Bam like Yellow Man did come get me and it came and he took me to Channel One and I went there freestyle. Wow, bam, bam. no pen, no paper? N nope. I didn't write it until after, long after I finished voicing it, days after I, 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 do, I didn't even remember some of the things that I say. <laughs> I have to listen it and then write and it then and write, then write tra it. Literally transcribe your yes, own song. Yes, yes. And yes. Yellow Man, he's obviously somebody who's also somebody huge in reggae and dancehall culture. Yes, yes. Did, did you guys have a, a great relationship prior to the recording? We are, we, yeah, we um, we used to. I used to work with Yellow Man. We had a sound system. Okay, you know, I started my career on sound system. So um, Yellow Man and I used to work on a sound DJ and a sound um, aces that you know back in um, back in back in the early eighties, maybe eighty eighty one. After the song was picking up a bit, and you're getting international gigs, you're getting flown over the world to perform the song. Was that when you realized how much of a cultural influence that your one record was having, not only on dancehall in Jamaica, but, but the world? Well, I, to be frank, I, I'm a bit truthful. I, when I, living in Jamaica, I, I never hear Bam Bam play there. Wow. Okay. The tune that I had played there was One Two. Two first. One Two and Transport Connection. Bam Bam, I didn't hear Bam Bam at all. Nobody was playing when, it. No, I didn't hear it. <laughs> and all the traveling I was traveling, it's because of One Two and, and Transport Connection, because there were singles before. You see, they, they were singing before I did the album, but I never hear Bam Bam play in Jamaica. And I didn't. When I migrated here in 1996, and when I came here, that's how I see how big it was. Wow, so was it a bit of a surprise or a shock? Yes, it, was a, it was a surprise, a shock to me. It was. Because you were probably also like, uh, people didn't recognize that you were the singer. You'd no. You'd be places and you'd hear your song come of on. Of course, and nobody, know, nobody knows me. Only who knows knows, but people like, who know. People still, a lot of people still don't know me. Amazing. A so lot of people. When did you feel like you were getting the recognition that you deserved in the States after you um, already come here in 96? How long after was after a belly movie. Mm. And I think that was 1998. Yes, Mr. Hype Williams. Yes, after belly. After belly. I start, you know, seeing, you know, people really seeing me, you know, and saying, that's, yes, yes, that's, 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 that's the same bam bam I did in Jamaica. That's the same one I did when I was like, you know, 20 years. Wow. 20 so, years old. I, actually, my next question was about Belly because our staff were, were young now. So mm -hmm. we literally grew up, I grew up watching Belly. Okay. And my first introduction to Sister Nancy was through that movie. Belly. The infamous scene. Mm -hmm. But was it weird for you when you got the call? Did, did you even know? Like, nobody called me. I um, Oh, really? <laughs> no, nobody called me for Belly. Belly, I was just home watching TV, um, HBO, and that's where I saw it. No So I, I recorded it on a VCR. That's how I saw Belly. Is on in, in that movie. I, so I, they I didn't contact you nobody. Get your they didn't, your no, they didn't contact. They contact Winston Riley. Okay. And then when I saw it, I I called him because he was alive at the time. He was alive, and I, I talked. I spoke to him, and he, he told me that everything is all right. I everything is fine. When in the meantime, he had the tune. You know the um the copyright and everything. The tune was written and done by him, and a DJ by the name of Nancy White. He didn't have my name on the record. You. you understand? He didn't even have my name on there. The person that he had on there was Techniques Winston Riley and Nancy White, not me. So when I, his sister is the one who sent the record to me because she been there from 
ancient days. Day one, right. And she said, look at this, and I see it. And I said, who the hell is Nancy White? <laughs> Because my last name is Russell and my correct name is not Nancy. Nancy. There's just a pet name I use as Sister Nancy. For the stage you know? name, right? Yes, for stage. And I call him and he say, you have this whole lot of money for give me from belly and thing. And I say, all right, we need it. Because I was going to school at the time. You know, and because and, so, you earned it. It's yes. Your, it's your vocals. And, and he told me to meet him at Moody's Record on White Plains Road. And I sat there for 12 hours. He'd never come. So I didn't get nothing for it. Goodness. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And they have done so much things from that time yes. to, to, to when the commercial with the Reebok come out. I still didn't get anything. But it's when Reebok came out now, I started to, I said, I have to get serious. And that's when I, I decided to take them to court. Well, what do you think, what, what, like, what makes reggae special to foreigners who come? Well, the good, music, the good, music, the good, um, the good regular artists. You know, artists that you where you, you can stand up and, and, and full joy them. Mean full joy. Mean you would say enjoy. I say full joy. Artists that you can stand up and full joy. You don't have to. Them, them. You're so shocked when you hear them. You don't even have the time to dance. Then you have these artists in Jamaica. A lot of them were not getting any um, work or whatever because most of the, the shows in Jamaica they pick and choose just the basic ones. You know and. Right. And not using the, the ones who really set the pace for her, for all the younger ones. You know, they're not using those artists anymore. They use the new artists. And I know they can't work like, like us. They can't. Definitely. They can't work like us. They work, <laughs> work for 10, 15 minutes and not. But people like us, we work for an hour and a half. And you keep everybody on their feet of course. the whole entire time. You enjoy that. Gotcha. So you know? what are some things that you're looking forward to uh, this year now? I know we're well, sometimes um, here now. Well, this year, as usual, I am. Um, I do um, live performances, and I'm not going to stop doing that because that's 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 what I do. And um, you know, I have working with Large Up with um, Jesse and Gravy. Where they just launched my um, T-shirt and all of that. I'm looking to to do um, some new records.